generic across right, everything. Right. But the design is specifically for the window manager. Okay. Um, and so XFCE would have their own design and and, uh, and, and, and just a very policy and stuff. Yeah, a very right. dull <coughs> policy would probably work very well for XFCE. Okay. You don't need to do anything much more than let people turn on additional monitors. Because you're not doing, because as far as I'm aware, XFC doesn't do anything interesting with the edges of the screen or with the like, top of the screen. It's, it's just right. Yeah, a lot of the issues that people are seeing are specific to Unity. Because I keep hearing, hearing Shell, and I'm Shell, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, it's probably all, all the development folks there or somewhere around that. I think by Shell they mean. Yeah, by mean Shell, shell. In, this, in this case, we mean Unity Shell. Unity. You. But they're, they're, I'm, I'm sure the behind the shell there's probably issues at every other layer down right. down the stack. We've been the design team, we've been focusing on the shell design. But we need to start think thinking and try trying to work to work out what are those other issues that are going to hit us when we get into implementation. For instance, hot plugging um, different uh, dis display types, HDMI, <coughs> display port, VGA. I don't know what the support is there, I don't know what the information we get. I don't know what what we can do around those use cases. So at the moment, uh, hot plugging all of those things should work. User space will get uh, GNOME settings daemon will get a uh, notification that a display has been hot plugged. We'll probe it. We'll get the edid that it's an HDMI display, and we'll apply whatever configuration you had previously set to it. Or that try and always work. <laughs> that bit, that's like like modulo <laughs> bugs. Um, and we'll, if you haven't plugged it in before, we'll apply some default policy, which is, I believe, to span to the right. Clone? Or span oh, actually, no, no, I think it's span to the right. Um, yes, that's is, correct. Is the default policy. That's correct. Yeah, we know that the config tools are um, a little flaky here and there. And so, unless the monitor is plugged in when the text starts, in this case, X will. Right, yes. The, the GNOME settings daemon has a different default policy to X, which X's default policy is to clone, settings daemon is to span. Um, but X doesn't do, X doesn't have any hot plug policy at all. Um, so is it reasonable to assume that with like DM, for example, like I've, I often run that configuration we're talking about with the laptop, uh, laptop one to say with, um, with an external monitor <coughs> when I boot, uh, the greeter is clone worth the display, so I'm assuming we're not actually running, running the displays plugged in, in, in Unity. Uh, in Unity greeter, I should say. No, in fact, we turned that off because it was confusing Unity greeter. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. At, at, at Unity greeter time, we just, yeah, we just used the yeah. default X yeah. Um, setup. Oh, yeah. Is it worth having a very quick skim through of this and sure. look, look, looking at it from a technical perspective about <coughs> yes. what you won't be able to do? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So just to clarify, these are like scope notes for our, uh, our specification. We have lots of raw material in lots of places. So this specification doesn't um, exist as yet, but you know the work over the next couple of weeks is to you know, is to collect everything together into this spec and make it public. Um, uh, before you guys start going down, I'm assuming that we have a prioritized that they were trying to get first, like one external monitor, one projector, one dock, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so while well, I see three by one up there and two by two and all that sort of stuff, good, good stuff. Yeah. Lower on list. Yeah. Nailing just. Yeah. The, 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 the pro, well, <coughs> we won't be able to do everything here on this side, but our priority is to two, two, two monitors. Yeah. We won't, we, we won't, we don't have time to do this work, to, to do all this work, and we definitely won't be doing any work that only works on more than two monitors. It has to. If it benefits more than two monitors, great, but it has to be very applicable to the two, two monitor config. We will organise <coughs> the specification so that it's scoped. Uh, one of the things that <coughs> Bryce mentioned uh, towards the beginning is just to make sure that also we're testing on a lot of different chipsets. I mean, as you mentioned earlier, things seem to work reasonably well on, um, in certain scenarios of NVIDIA, but uh, the majority of laptops that are, and workstations that are shipping are Intel, and that seems to be one of the uh, say less successful platforms at the moment. You'd say less successful? Uh, in terms of multi-monitor. Really? Yeah, I disagree with 
Yeah, yeah that's, that's not been my... Intel tends to work very well. And NVIDIA seems to be problematic with most of you guys. Yeah, we seem, to, we seem to get bug reports mainly on NVIDIA. Apart from the model, model. There, there is that... I mean, there's bugs. Yeah. yeah. So probably the bug that you're thinking of is the one where you disable a disable one of the displays yeah, and yeah. and it all goes but pear shaped. I know of uh, quite a few other people that have and customers that are having um people on the monitor plugging in, not working, plugging in, things crashing, popping up. And these are these are all people using it like that is Things crashing and locking up probably means that Unity has been silly. Yeah. yeah. You, like, Unity still has crasher bugs on hot plug, um, which have hit, hit a lot less than during the early Eric cycle, but people still hit them. I, of course, don't, because my hardware is magical. Yeah. <laughs> Please feel free to escalate those bugs to me, and I'll make sure they get to where they need to go. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so you know, we, we just articulated here, I guess, you know, some of the main use cases we're looking to serve. There's a lot of like user journeys and stuff we put behind all this as well. Um, so <coughs> you, you have the um, the productivity um, situations, obviously, where you're going to use a second monitor to you know to, um, you, know, to you know to be able to you know develop and debug at the same time, just give yourself more real estate for um, you know for your windows. Um, Presentation is obviously another big use case. So just getting that story right with the um, the laptop and the projector. So extension being the, um, you know, the, the default um, policy, as you say, uh, and, you know, and we may see you know, if there's any heuristics we can use to identify. Yeah, we, we've plugged a projector and give the option to We're going to try to give you that. Yeah, so okay, great, it. cool. Um, also, you know, when you're presenting, you know, we, we've watched lots of people presenting and stepping forwards to keep, you know, to keep tapping their laptop to make sure it doesn't go to sleep. So you know, this notion that you might have a presentation mode or also invite you to enable whereby you know we turn off some of the you know power saving features um, on your laptop. Turn you know. off notify OST. Yeah. 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 Onto your non <coughs> so we can't all see your uh, your Gwiver notification. I always really yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those use cases are very similar also for the you know for home cinema if you you know if you're sharing your laptop to, to stick a film on the TV for the family, you know we do the same stuff. I have a question. Um, what are you guys so what we will do in the in the user experience specification is fully articulate what should happen in all those um, you know plugging scenarios. So booting, hot plugging, disconnecting. You know, we will articulate fully all of those um, all of those use cases. Yeah, I understand that, but where is the plugging in the software? Is it in the drivers? Is it in the So there are so there are some prob there are problems all the way up and down the stack. I think most of the problems at the moment are in Compiz and the Unity code. Um, up, yeah. The, the, the problem that this will help us with is that one of the things we've noticed as we try to fix things is that one person thinks, oh, you know, it should always turn on the external monitor or do this. And then someone says, oh, but in projector mode, that you know, causes this problem. Oh, but when you dock, then it causes this problem. So what this will help us with is, is itemizing all of the use cases, all the different ways that people <coughs> use things, and how the system should actually behave in those cases. <coughs> Knowing that, then we can make sure that the system actually does adhere to those requirements. So, right, and Stuart and John, I think we've got two problems here right now. Right now, fundamentally, Unity is kind of broken for multi monitor. Then we also have a broader thing that you guys are working on, like how can, what's the, the best multi monitor experience we can make? So we've got two things to fix, but right now we, we, we don't have a good multi monitor story. So what this, this is great if you have this, but what we really need is like the top five, six things that are broken about Unity, how those are going to be fixed, and then <coughs> how we can get those as I said prior to before, getting those as soon as possible so we can fix that multi monitor story. Chris, Bryce, and the next guys will go through and fix the rest of that underlying infrastructure, and then we'll get on to all this stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, it's so, so, so they're, they're, probably, they're, they're probably about five top bugs to make Unity passable um, on the multi-monitor setup. So, so, what are those? Um, so um, a bunch of those are in Launchpad. 
um, and some some other ones are kind of on the new project list. So 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 to call to call some of them out, um, the way the top bar integrates in multi monitors, um, that's slightly broken. That needs to be fixed. That's something Ted's going to be working on. I handed that over to him yesterday. Um, getting the uh, pull, pulling out the launcher, getting the window launcher interactions. Jason's working on that. He showed me a prototype. Of, what was that? Um, pull, pulling it, pulling out the launcher. It does. There's a, it doesn't work. It it no. Because Not if you have it on the right-hand monitor, because there's no edge for you to hit against. <coughs> nice. So, so Jason's working on that. He was showing me two days ago a prototype that he'd managed to get working since the beginning of the design sprint. So I know that's on um, his radar. Um, there's multi-monitor configuration. Um, so Andy Rock, <coughs> who was, here, who was work, working on updating that dialogue? Oh, um, that's Marco? That's blocking people from, or you just don't want to get to block. Oh, no, no, it's, for instance, there's, <coughs> until, so, so we're ta ta taking baby steps, until we have the, a bit, until Jason's finished his work with the cursor, you have to select which launcher, which screen the launcher goes on. We know this is a very imperfect situation, but we don't currently have, have a feature that lets people do this easily. Um, so the work that's happening over <coughs> here is adding that feature in as a short, as a, as a very, very short term fix. So do we have those? So that's part of the first, that's part of the second. Sorry? So it sounds like in some cases, the launch is on the wrong monitor. Yeah, and we don't, have, we don't make it easy for people to configure that. Okay. Right. So you can, you can configure it, it's just that this, this dialogue is done for sure. So when you get um, a second screen on there, you can drag this between, and it will move the launcher on. <coughs> yeah. Should, should you should you happen to think yeah. that that is something that you <laughs> so, can drag? It, it does exist. <laughs> Are those internal things that are blocking users? What's that? Well, it's kind of the same thing. So. Mm. Are those okay. the two things that are blocking users that the menu is in the game the launcher? And it crashes all the time in the position. But yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about, but there's some things that are just like oversight from the unity design. That, like, I think I think those, those those are probably the main things. So if we fix those two things, we'll be able to unblock people who are using Onera. You want to use Onera for two monitors? Two yeah, monitors. We, we we should hopefully get them fixed very early. One right, thing I there's some oh. possible on, on Unity, right? Um, examples the other day. If you open settings control panel, it happens to come from the monitor that you can't see. Yeah. And that's not actually a Unity issue. That's that's something. That's a generic comp is, yeah, comp is needs to be smarter about window placement. Yeah. So, we've, multi -monitor so we've, we've, we've got a couple of bugs open about that as well. Um, that it was so, so I guess what, over, yes. well, my question is, do we have a set of bugs known or feature issues or whatever that are basically, what Rick said, unblocking multi-monitor projector docs, that type of stuff, and then all that other stuff comes second? Yeah. Can we in fact associate all of these blocking bugs with this blueprint so it appears on the burn down chart and we can should monitor we, this nicely? Should we create a team to subscribe all the multi monitor bugs to? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think you're going to need a team to find all the bugs. Yeah. Well, def definitely tag the multi hyphen monitor. Well, I'm just thinking they probably spam a lot different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and they're probably different descriptions but for the same problem. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be complex. <coughs> it sounds like there's three things. So we got sometimes you can't use the menu, sometimes you can't use the launcher, and sometimes you can't use the settings dialog. Well, this the set the, it's not it's not just the settings dialog. That's an issue with uh, comp is placing windows in in areas where they're inaccessible. Right, but you're only dead in the water if it's a settings dialog. <coughs> One thing that I or showed no, last UBS was not the way Windows does it. It's quite nice to have the, the Windows P, Super P, and then you just switch between the different things because I think a lot of people are actually, they don't know where to configure the displays. Even experienced Linux users have come up to me and said, I can't find the display settings now. Right. So that, That's fair input, but I mean, the main thing I'm trying to accomplish is so that people who want to use Onera to develop on and faulty monitors to like do it. So at the very least if it's stable. So, hmm? so you're trying to get to at least stable. At least usable. Yeah. yeah. So at least you could like for instance debug the issues right. that make it crash. Okay. Um, 
So it sounds like there's just three things, and then if we just like knock those out right away, we'll be at a steady state. And in fact, the ship, I would argue, is shippable, though not necessarily desirable. Yeah, correct. So I think we should sprint to that. Yeah. Do you agree, Jason? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. How are you guys buying this Testing. So, so what Stuart will be doing is he's good, he's writing out basically the way a design specification is structured. It's basically a series of functional tests. They they use cases that you can step through. So we will um, write a complete basically set of functional tests with coverage of all the use cases and all the different permutations and different scenarios that we're trying to support. And having this set of tests will allow us to walk through those tests and find where their breakage is, and then it'll allow all the people working all the different things that have to happen to make these, te these tests, uh, these tests um, succeed, to have <coughs> kind of a structure in which to structure their work and make sure we work in a consistent way. Are they going to be automated? I would love for them to be automated. We'll write them as use cases. If someone can automate them, that would be <coughs> awesome. No, if you don't decide the test, the, the code to be automatic, then you won't be able to do that. In a lot of cases, these tests are necessarily not easily automated. They involve you know, physically manipulating the computer. Okay, yeah, those cases mm -hmm. need to be manual, but <coughs> I'm sure there are some cases that we could open them and get some further out of the, you know, so on the main platform. In terms of the window placement test, we're going to add test to confidence that will test that. So the lower down, they will be on there. So they will test at least a good portion of the window placement issues. And some of, and for the, for the bits which are above, um, for the bits which are below the very top level stuff, just turning on and off displays programmatically would be probably enough to trigger a lot of the, you wouldn't need to actually have physical, physically unplugging the screen. You could just turn that off at a lower level and check that the rest of the code figures that out. Yeah, I already have tests written for, for that. Um, do you have hardware that can do where you can turn <coughs> External monitors on and off. We have ideas about it, but we would like to discuss the problem. Yeah, so that's what you would like to have. Okay. <coughs> Is it worth carrying on through the document here? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, in terms of just breaking down the solution, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, we prioritise the, the booting up and the hot plugging of, of displays. So, so as you say, you know, how we test those, we fully articulate them as use cases in the UX spec, which then you know, you know, the developers can use to, you know, to, to build um, test cases for. So just how we enumerate, how we configure that, um, that stuff. So logging in and lock screens, you know, we're talk, talking about the design here. Um, you know, we want to try and, and just have the login screen, you know, on, on one display only. Obviously, there's danger there because, you know, we, we, we re you know, safety and redundancy, you know, you'd think that, you, might, you know, it might be more sensible to put the, um, those sorts of critical screens on all the monitors. Um, we want to try to do this in an elegant way. So we'll either put, put those screens on each monitor or give you a way to, you know, to move um, login screens onto, you know, onto displays, um, you know, which you can best access. Um, so, you know, we have um, user journeys articulated for that stuff already. Configuring display. So, again, you know, we're looking, I guess, more at the, uh, the long view here. So, um, you know, the display preferences panel, we're looking at the modes we'd support. So, obviously, mirrored and extended desktop. And then this notion of a spanned desktop where, you know, all of the space provided by all of the displays is one single space. So, if you maximise a window, it maximises across the entire real estate. Um, what would that be used for? <clears throat> so, you know, there are, there are sort of edge cases there, you game, know, display game, walls, gaming. gaming. So, you game, so, know, yeah, that's kind of in the long grass, so that would be, in terms of, you know, the prioritised spec, somewhere near the end. Um, <coughs> our hot plugging um, scenarios. Um, <coughs> so, automatically extending the desktop, providing this option to, to, to mirror if we can use these heuristics to identify that it's a TV or a projector. Uh, this presentation mode whereby we can block um, notify OSD you know, and stop the, uh, you know, the, uh, the power, some of the power saving features. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously you know, when you're um, unplugging a, a display, if there, are, if there are windows on the display that you've just removed, you know, moving them back onto the visible area. And then possibly if you then hot plug it back in, 
you know, if you've not moved those windows in between, we could, you know, look at you know, perhaps placing them back where they were. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you're moving, moving around with your laptop, but you have notionally, uh, you know, your, your setup um, on a desktop somewhere, you know, we're just looking at supporting that. In a, you know, yeah, that's, way. It, that's very noticeable. When I was messing with, you know, uh, plugging and unplugging, when the windows <coughs> all just kind of migrate up to the top left, yeah, um, you know, we want to do that in a nice way. Right, right now, Comp is anything um, reinterprets the old coordinates of the windows in yeah. the context of the new monitor configuration, so which tends to sort of pull them inwards. Yeah. Or they end up on, on yeah. a different so workspace. That, uh, that would be a nice specific consideration that, say, a, mon a window on a given uh, workspace stays on that workspace yeah. across the plug and unplug. <laughs> so that that's, that's cool. perhaps the, the bare minimum that should happen, yeah. So, that so, would be so, <laughs> so in a pop plugging situation, someone may have a laptop, they've got a second monitor on their desk, and there'd be maybe three meeting rooms all with different projectors, and they occasionally walk into those other meeting rooms. What we'd like to do is once they've set up their laptop with any of those monitors, we want to remember those monitors and see if, if we can get enough information to identify them specifically. And then when they plug in, we go back to their last, their last configuration of that specific monitor. And if they haven't moved a window in the meantime since they unplugged, restore it back to its original position. Obviously, if they've moved it, it wouldn't be feasible to restore it back. So those mechanisms should be there uh, in terms of actual resolutions and positions. Mm -hmm. um, theoretically, for, depending on how exactly you want to configure things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, window basically something that would be really cool to have. And we, the ability to uh, identify a monitor easily is something that we want to do in the low level, <coughs> low level tools. Brilliant. To That's make it, to make, to, to give applications an easy way to say, is this a monitor that I've seen before? That, and what that, is it? That's something we want to utilize in lots of ways. So, yeah, cool. Okay, so moving on, I, I guess, then to some of the features in the, uh, in the Unity shell. So the launcher, we're looking at one launcher per display. So, and this is linked to productivity. So you know, if, you, if you don't need to travel across, um, you know, say, two screens to get hold of your launch on the far left. So we would provide a launcher on each display. In order to do that in a way that's elegant, you know, we, we're sort of, um, you know, the, the design is that those launchers are hidden by default. And when you move to the left edge, we lightly track the cursor. Um, and um, so, so one of two things will happen there. You, you will just move quickly to the edge and we'll catch the cursor and reveal the launcher. Or if you continue to push, you now we have an algorithm such that if you continue to push, you'll just push through that edge. And we've spent quite a lot of work looking at that to make sure that that's not, obviously, there's a danger of that being irritating because there are other use cases whereby you might have your, say, a, a main window on one screen and some tool palettes on the other and you want to move quickly across. So, you know, we're looking at how persistent you are at pushing across the edge, um, you know, and, and making it such that you don't, you're not stuck on that edge, you know, as, as you try to pass it. So, um, so, in order to support our position on the launches, we've also done quite a bit of work on cursor, um, cursor interactions on the, specifically when you're travelling across the left edge of a display. Similarly, actually, we also track when you go to the right so that it's easy to target um, menus if you have two displays you know, vertically arranged. Um, <coughs> so, so yes, you know, th those points there are, are, are articulated. Um, <coughs> so application indicators, what we've also, we found in usability testing that um, you know, users struggle um, to predictably <coughs> be able to um, figure out how the spread works. So you know, d depending, on the state of, you know, depending on the state of the system, um, you know, the spread will sometimes not appear at all, and sometimes it will appear um, you know, in, in different ways. So, so what we're doing is, um, when, when you click on um, an icon in the launcher, um, if you click on it and the, app and the application isn't focused, then the first thing it will do is focus that application and the, the latest window that was in focus. If that window was on another display, then we will, um, we will pulse the display, or we'll pulse the window or some things to draw your attention to the fact that you know, the window you've just brought to focus isn't actually on the, on the display you're looking at. It will attract it if it's your new <coughs> peripheral vision, if you've got, I've got 13-inch monitors. So if I'm looking over here and I've got a window over here, and I click on something, I might not notice that being brought, but you add a bit of movement, and you can catch movement in the fire angles. Yeah. You know, we, all, we, we looked at other situations like prioritising new window creation, but you know, we, we need to be very careful about all these interactions. That's why we built this, um, this prototype, which you, know, we, we can, we, we, you can see these things you know, with much more clarity when, you know, when you actually see the prototype. 
So just, I mean, we could probably summarise this just in terms of the application indicators identify whether you have um, a window on the display that you're looking at, um, and we've also made the, um, the predictability of the launcher click um, much more straightforward. You know, there's, you know, there's less of a truth table you know, in terms of what happens when you click it based on state. Um, so top bar um, and the global menu. So we'll have a top bar on each display, again, and that's for reasons of productivity in terms of travelling um, you know, to access, uh, access the item. <coughs> An mm. application shared between two screens. I mean, for example, you more as an application on the right side, so it's partly on a screen and partly on another. Mm -hmm. The global menu actually is shown if in the screen where there's uh, at least the one quarter of this total <coughs> of the application size. But how should we manage it? Please? Okay, so in our prototype at the moment, we, we effectively determine um, which display the window is on by um, majority coverage. So if the window is mostly on one display, yeah, that's, you know, that, that's where the, um, you know, the, the menu is available. Okay, okay so <clears throat> one thing we also wanted to avoid with... Um, with, with both workspaces and alt tab is, is any sort of um, magical movement, you know, which again makes it difficult to predict your actions. So um, if you, um, with regards to alt tab, what we do is we will only show those applications which are visible on your, on your current set of displays. We want to avoid you know, shifting workspaces uh, without the user you know, explicitly um, doing that for themselves. So that all, all the switching actions will work on your currently visible monitors. Um, they won't be operating <coughs> on any invisible workspaces on any of your monitors. Um, so you explicitly, this is because people use workspaces a lot to uh, segment <coughs> their different um, task areas. That seems to be the most common case of workspace usage. Um, so yeah, well, alt tab between everything on all of your monitors, but not on hidden workspaces. And same, same with the launcher. We'll show where things are, but we won't switch you. OK. <clears throat> and I guess it, we, we can move through some of these points um, more quickly, I guess. So application launching behavior, basically, you know, wherever you launch an application, you know, it will appear on the display from which you launched it. So um, if you use the launcher and you click, um, you know, if, if that application hasn't been launched yet, you obviously launch the window on the, you know, on the display you've, you know, you've, you've clicked the launcher from. Um, and the same with Dash and file association. How does that... How does that work with the keyboard shortcuts, super one, two, three, four, five? Those don't have a screen. Yeah, so we're, 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 I, 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 I mean, we'll, we'll need to make sure that we test this fully, but the assumption is that the, the display with the currently focused window is, you know, is, is where we root, you know, is where, uh, you know, keyboard shortcuts will be targeted. Um, going back to uh, the not switching you to the right or to the desktop that has your app. The only case that I experience where that is kind of an issue is with IRC. Like if someone pings me on IRC and it's on my first desktop and I'm over on the third <coughs> desktop working, working on something. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you, how do you so, foresee so, that? So, so, so what, we, what, what we're thinking of doing at the moment, and it's still a work in progress, is so you've got your IRC client open, it's only got a single window. That wing window is on a workspace that's not currently visible on any of your monitors. You click on it, what we do is we zoom out to show you that IRC client on the different workspace, but we then switch your workspace. So we're adding a click into here, um, so it's an extra click, but you, when you're, the, the benefit is you're not having a switch in the workspace which messes up with your mental spatial positioning <coughs> and awareness of where you are. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, that's so, tricky, you know, there's this um, you know, introducing new clicks to clarify, you know, conceptually what's happening. So that, you know, I think an understand. extra click is better than having to, like, think about, okay, which desktop is it on? And where am yeah. I now? Yeah. Do we even need workspaces if we have more So that's, that's something else we're doing in the cycle, making workspaces optional. Whether they're in by default or out by default is another question, but yeah. the objective is to make them optional. And, you know, the more monitors you add to that, 
Yeah, phys physical workspace is better than the virtual workspace. It, it would certainly simplify our use cases to have. Well, I, I personally find that you, you, I use them more because Do you? Um, with multi monitor, uh, with multi -monitor yeah. it's usually a static work area that I have up for an extended period, and day by day, I will be working on different projects. Right. And I want that workstation to retain whatever I was working on. So if I'm working on X bugs, one day I'll be looking at one. Sure, but with, with multi-monitor you do this. Yes. But See, this screws me up because I'll have, I'll be working on a presentation on the one monitor, and then I'm <coughs> used to going control right to get to my IRC, and my IRC isn't there, and my, and my, no, my presentation's gone. And right? It so it really screws me up having multi-monitors and multi-workspaces. You'll be able to switch it off. Yeah. yeah, thank you. An another, thing, <laughs> another thing we've explored in the design as well is allowing you to switch workspaces independently on each display. So you could switch to a different workspace mm -hmm. on one display and leave yeah. your workspace oh, where it is. Oh, yeah, good. See, I personally <laughs> like that, but uh, again, it complicates things. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea if yeah. 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 There might be a way of supporting both global workspaces, which is an individual yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we did, just, just on that note, we did discuss um, making it, you can have workspaces, you can have multi monitors, but not both. Um, but we, and we looked into that for quite a while because it simplifies a set of use cases and there's a lot of crossover. Um, but in the end, we decided that's a bad idea because it's breaking into people's workspaces and we worked out how to solve the set, the set of problems that we were faced initially with. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's quite a penalty there. You know, you just add one more display, you'll now link, your, you've only got two spaces to work with. So. <coughs> okay, so cursor behaviour is you know is, is something um, we we needed to address, but particularly for the, you know for how we, we you know we're we're suggesting the launcher work. So in, in order to you know to reveal the launcher, we've already talked about the fact that we need to track the um, the cursor lightly on the, on the left edge of the display. We we also um, you know have looked at trapping the cursor lightly on the edges of the displays to make side by side maximised work, you know across multiple monitors. So if you start dragging a window, you'll hit the right edge and you'll just be held there lightly such that you, you, know, you could fling a window to the side and have it maximised down the, partially maximised down the right hand side. Um, and, you know, and we've tested that in the prototype, that seems to work quite well. Um, <clears throat> and also just, um, you know, in, in terms of problems people have with cursors on, on large desktops, um, you know, losing the cursor is a problem. So, you know, it's very difficult to find decent discoverable gestures, but you know, when, when people lose their cursor, obviously you know, you'll shake it so that you're drawn to the movement. So we're also looking at perhaps recognising that gesture and also you know, doing something like maybe pulsing over the mouse you know, to draw some extra attention to it. Um, and also how, how a mouse moves across um, a ragged desktop. So you know, where each of your um, screens... Getting back to that, yeah. um, is it possible for us, like if the monitor that they're shaking the mouse cursor on is turned off to do something different. So I mean that's that's something that I see like with my mother is like she'll have the monitor turned off and then <coughs> As, in, as in the physical monitor turned off but X thinks it's connected? Mm, no, it, the X thinks it's turned off. X thinks it's turned off. Uh, how is, the, mouse, how is the mouse over there? Because the mouse is, the mouse shouldn't be allowed off the connected CRTCs. Mm. Right. I don't know how you get the mouse over there. So if it, should, it is on my system again, my system may be magical, but uh, no, I've, I've hit the same bug. Where okay, the where you can get the mouse off. Yeah. It, it could be just a bug. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, you know, if the projector was on standby, or you know, you, you just turned your display off, then then that's you know that's a, a valid use case. But yeah, if it's, it's not hard to do technically because there's no there, there is in general no way to know whether the yeah. display on the end of the connector is turned on or off. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, and in yeah, fact, it still cord. responds to either requests. Mm -hmm. Really, yeah. that's yeah. very broken. Wow. Yeah, it's moderately annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we've so we've articulated some journeys that you know assume that we can detect that, but we, we know that we need a fallback position because you know that that's you know the technical feasibility of that is, is tricky. I or think it's you not can. Possible. I think you can tell with display port displays, but other than display port displays, I think the I think the difference between the monitor being on and off is indistinguishable from the computer yeah. side. Yes, I just want to ask one question. Because I haven't heard it brought up yet. A use case where you have multiple displays with um, non-homogeneous resolutions. 
That was just what we were that's, that's the next that was point. the next bit. <laughs> So, so, yeah, so I, I've used this term ragged desktop. So, obviously, you know, where, where you have um, you know, displays of different physical sizes, different resolutions, you know, obviously, you know, there's mismatches on how they're, um, they're aligned in space. So, um, you know, some of the things we've, we've, we've looked at is, you know, if your cursor hits a hard edge, you know, it, it, it may be sensible in some cases to actually move that back up um, and onto you know, the, the, the next adjacent display. So, and that's particularly true if you have, say, a laptop and a projector. So there's no physical connection. Um, you know, we, we've, we've observed people um, trying to move their mouse across to the projector and struggling because they're different resolutions and you're hitting that, you know, that hard edge where they don't share um, you know, the, the adjacent edge. Um, so you know, we're just looking at projecting the mouse back up that edge so that they can carry on traveling across. Yeah, I've also had where like, um, <coughs> if you have like, a laptop which has you know, 1300 by 600, and then you have a, a desktop monitor with 1960 by whatever, 1900 by whatever. Um, sometimes, like, opening an application will open it partially into the black area or completely. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> that's... Yeah. That's just... So that's just comp is being really stupid. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I was discussing... Windows, that. Like, that area becomes an unusable... You can't put will actually put a window. Yeah. Compass will sometimes actually start a window. Yeah. So you have you have a, a virtual. You have a rectangular line. virtual. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if this is a, a height of 19 and this is a height of 800, you'll still have 1900 height with this yes. black area that you can never see. Yeah. Or in a, fact, get to. Yeah, you can put your mouse in there, you can put Windows in there. You can't put your, you shouldn't be able to put your mouse in there now. Maybe a recent update. Windows will um, start. Maybe, maybe that was only a Natty then. But you can uh, do it in Natty. Yeah, you can do it in Natty. You shouldn't be able to do that in an error. Oh, okay. um, but, but that won't, wouldn't prevent, that wouldn't necessarily prevent Compiz from putting Windows in there. Which does happen sometimes. Ooh. <coughs> I was discussing that bug yesterday. How, okay. How, how do you even tell if there's a window in there? Because you can't move the mouse in to get it, you can never well, see it. Well, the one I was looking is you get windows partially in there, which, yeah. should, which shouldn't happen either. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Whoops. Cool. Um, <coughs> so we're, we're also looked at window behavior. So, you know, again, we'll fully articulate this, you know, with respect to... Um, you know, maximizing windows, being able to quickly move a maximized window from one display to the other by you know, pulling down, moving across and pushing back up into the title bar. Side by side maximize works much better now across multiple monitors because of this cursor handling we use you know, to just lightly track um, the cursor as you move across the display edges. Um, <coughs> so any, anything special? Yeah, and I think it's all mentioned as a bug when you move windows across a vertically stacked display. So obviously, they yeah, will articulate those use cases so that they you know they can be tested against. Okay, so <coughs> we already talked uh, briefly about the spread and <coughs> how that works. So we, we, we're articulating that here. Um, yeah, and we can show that on, on the prototype um, clearly. This, this, uh, the spread <coughs> says. <coughs> Or the, the spread that we're looking to build is a lot of value in a multi-monitor environment because it allows you to very clearly see what instances of an application you've got on both of your monitors. It allows you to, um, because it's non-positional, um, it's just there's an application on this monitor, there's an application on this monitor, it allows you to move applications between monitors and workspaces in uh, very, very fast as well. Yeah. So we spread on all monitors, we show the, the windows which belong um, on the monitors only on those monitors themselves and you can drag, as John says, dr quickly drag across. So it's, you know, it's, it's a good um, sort of mapping conceptually to, you know, to how the windows belong to the, uh, the, the different displays. <coughs> okay, so workspaces, again we've also briefly touched on that. So, um, you know, when, when you spread, if you also have workspaces, you know, you, you can move your current spread um, into the 4x4 four four grid and, and move items across workspaces. You can also have um, separate workspaces on individual displays, which means that, you know, if, if you do have, it's, it's less disruptive, so you can move across your workspaces on one display, whilst, you know, the stuff you have on your other display stays where it is. Oops. 
and then th there are just then some other points that we need to address. So you know things like desktop backgrounds, you know how we deal with screensavers, print screen. You know th th those are, are to be articulated in the you know in the, in the, in the spec. The backgrounds are kind of tricky because you can't predict what all different aspect ratios and resolutions that people are going to be yeah. using. Yeah. Let's give that some thought. Now, also, when we looked at workspaces, you know, for the default set of four workspaces, we've given them different backgrounds to help, again, you know, help people differentiate between, um, between their different workspaces. And you, again, you can see that on the prototype. Okay, so, so those are the, that's the breakdown of the solution. We then had a number of user stories you know, and user journeys just to help us um, you know, identify those use cases. Um, I'm not sure if we're a little short to go through those. So maybe we can skip down and talk about any work items or mm -hmm. follow up yeah. actions. So, yes, what needs to be done with this spec? So perhaps the first uh, <coughs> the first thing that needs to be done is to associate all of the bugs that we have in Launchpad that are blocking multi monitor with this. Um, with this spec, yeah. so we can so we have good visibility into those, and they get appropriately associated on the burn down charts. Yeah. Um, uh, that's you want them associated with the the blueprint or with the team or both. Or with the with the blueprint gives the, us the ability. To, use the blueprint. To yeah, track, okay. yeah, yeah, gives the ability to track them easily. Yeah. Um, Put the, uh, mm -hmm. the note yeah. yeah, and who can uh, <coughs> you oh. know all of those? Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have a look at the design bugs, um, but there are other bugs that uh, someone else should have a look as well. Okay, and compass crashed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, John, I'll be help, glad to help you out finding more bugs. Yeah, <coughs> if you could ping me with lots of bugs, so. Sure. Many hands make part work. Do that next week. I'm, I'm not here next week, so I'll be oh. hitting the bugs a week All right, right, you'll have a big list when you get back. Excellent. I'm not hard, I've already got a big list. Yikes. <laughs> this is weird. Where's my cursor? He's a shape gesture. <laughs> What's that? It's a shape gesture. Yeah. If Carl has that pattern crash. Uh, somebody's head's in the way. I think it's Chris. Sorry. No. Yeah. Oh, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, saying Chris is probably <laughs> two thirds chance. Man, I need the whole thing. All right, as does promise. All right. There's obviously all the design work. Yeah. There's all the design work that Stuart's doing. So it's kind of do design work, publish design work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very big line. That's awesome. Hey, before you go, um, I just want to say like I love what you guys do with multi monitor. I think it's gonna be cool. So I love work in twelve ten or twelve oh four. Twelve ten that looks great. Twelve oh four. One monitor, one projector, one dock. Okay. Anything else? We can lower prior Yeah. Um, before everyone leaves as well, um, just after this, we're going to go into the hallway where we've got the prototype set up. So anyone who wants to play with the prototype, look at it in a bit more detail, we'll be, we'll be there in three minutes. You can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> um.